Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this week I make an outfeed table for my table saw, and I don't know about you, but I feel the word ultimate gets thrown around a little too often in these YouTube videos. However, my vocabulary isn't strong enough to come up with a better adjective, so for now, this is just the outfeed table video. Some of you might have seen my workbench video a couple of weeks ago where I made my new miter station slash workbench out of this 80-20 aluminum extrusion. And I thought it was really cool. I liked using this new medium instead of wood or having to learn how to weld or something crazy like that. But I figured there had to be a better way. So I reached out to this company called Framing Tech and I kind of told them what I had in mind and they drew everything up for me and they basically just sent me a kit that was bolt together. So it was this really easy design and they can make it in any size, which I thought was really cool. There are no instructions with these kits, which made me nervous at first, but soon I saw how intuitive everything was and everything is with this really cool fastener system. And I'll show you exactly how these work, which will help you visualize when you're putting your kit together if you do decide to get a similar kit. So you just slide that piece into that one and it's got this really clever design that as you tighten it, it draws that Tina in closer, just like I show here. Pretty neat, right? So everything goes together really, really easy and really quick. I was expecting this to take me, you know, half a day to put together and I probably had the entire thing together in less than an hour. And that was including having to undo a couple sections that I, in the end, actually didn't have to undo. Someone on Instagram had commented saying that, that aluminum is soft and it's going to sag over time, and especially if I put something heavy on the middle. And one of the guys from Framing Tech chimed in and said that he ran an analysis on this particular design and they showed a 2000 pound load evenly distributed across the center was gonna show less than an eighth of an inch of deflection. So I thought that was pretty cool because I had no idea they actually ran an analysis when they are designing these tables. I always forget to say the cost of these projects until I am all the way done with my voiceovers. And it's not that I'm trying to hide anything from you guys. It's that I don't do a script. I basically just sit here and talk at my phone and say whatever pops into my head. So before I forget about it, the cost of this frame would be about $1,060, just over $1,000 for a ready to assemble frame, which I think is pretty decent. They did provide it to me at no charge in exchange for this video. And if you want one like this or drawn up to your own specs, they did say they would offer a 15% discount to anybody that mentions this video when you call in for your own table. Like I mentioned earlier, the entire project was assembled in probably just under an hour. And one of the advantages to aluminum is it is super light. Good luck doing this with wood or steel, although it was still a little bit awkward of me trying to figure out how to gently flip it over. But eventually I was able to get it. So yeah, just under an hour and it is very, very sturdy. Despite the troll comments that I post at the end of the videos, most everybody is actually really, really positive. And I have been getting quite a few comments asking when my project builds are gonna be coming back. I think people have kind of had enough with the shop builds and I do have all the footage of doing my ducting. However, I think I'm gonna hold off a little bit longer before I post that because I'm gonna try to get the build videos going pretty soon because you guys have been a great sport, but I understand most of you guys came to me because you liked watching the random project build. So this is another shop build and I'm gonna try to get back to the table builds and other types of woodworking projects as soon as I can, I promise. The good thing for this video is that you can actually still get some woodworking tricks from this shop build video. And this is the first time that I've actually done kind of a large scale inlay like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a template of my router table, and then I'm going to put that on another piece of plywood and kind of reverse the template with a white side inlay kit. And this will all make a little bit more sense as I get going. But what I wanted was to be able to drop this router table into my outfeed table. So it was just a perfectly snug fit. And I thought about running just butt joints up to it, but that wasn't really going to be my style. So we needed to make it a little bit more difficult. Like I mentioned, I'm going to be using a white side inlay kit and it comes with an eighth inch spiral bit and this little bushing there that has that piece that comes off. So you make your first cut with that one, then you add that spacer, make your second cut, and I will show you here in just a second what I mean. So there is my template. You now put the spacer on and that in theory should fit my router table perfectly. And this was just a test cut. I wanted to make sure that it was going to work before I cut into my nice outfeed table. And it's made for like a wood inlay. It's made to be exactly just a perfect fit. So it's going to be tight and especially with that plywood bowing, but there you go. It's good enough for an outfeed table. Anyway, there was one part where I let the router get away from me a little bit and there was a little gap, but other than that, I think it was pretty good. 
Here's a quick teaser of how this router inlay ended up and spoiler, I am extremely happy with it. But first, a quick word from this video sponsor, Bespoke Post. Look at this freaking thing. I don't know, is this a garden tool or a knife? No, this is like a, like a trowel. This is like an extreme trowel. Look at that. I've never seen a trowel with a gut hook before, by the way. Oh, there's more. There's this. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to dig deeper to find out what this is. No, I, I need to know what this is. I don't have any idea what this is. I, I gotta figure out what this thing is. Is there a card in the box? Oh my god, it's a bird call. <laughs> All right, start rolling. You've been rolling. Oh, I have been rolling. All right, so get it up close on that. Just had to go off screen to ask my wife if she knew what this was, and apparently she has better eyes than me, but it's a, hold on, get the mic up here. It's an Audubon bird call. You probably whistle like a sucker. You need your own bird call. Okay, we have a 30 foot USB camping light. This is a perfect tool roll up so I can put my chisels in a nice, nice soft canvas bag. This is actually really cool. What else? We have a jar, a jar with an X on it. Oh, it's a candle, it's a candle. River number two face oil. I think, does my face need oil? Tell me, my wife's shooting this. She's nodding. She says my face needs oil. I thought my face was too oily, but apparently I've never had face oil before. It's exciting. Hot sauce. I love hot sauce. I put hot sauce on everything. I put hot sauce on my sandwiches. And if you do not hot sauce your sandwich, you aren't doing it right. And a Hornitos gift, well not a gift certificate, a discount code for Hornitos, which Hornitos is actually my favorite tequila. Not sponsored, but should be. Hornitos. Hornitos. All right, last box. Whoa, is this, is this legal? I didn't tell them that I'm only 19. This way you can buy the cheap liquor, put it in here and just tell people it's like $400 a glass. This is, this is great. If you don't have like $70,000 worth of tools, you can tell people you made this yourself with whatever tools you do have. All right, I feel a lot better now that we figured out what this is. And if I didn't mention before, each box has at least $70 worth of stuff, despite the fact it only costs $45. If you wanna pause a month, you wanna skip a month, you can do that anytime. If they get the box wrong, you can swap it or exchange it completely hassle-free. And I love the fact that they do all the hard work. I do not like shopping. They do a good job finding the cool off the radar brands of stuff that I didn't even know I needed or stuff I didn't even know I wanted. So head to BSPK dot me forward slash blacktail or just click the link in the description promo code blacktail to get 20% off your first box on my workbench video a couple weeks ago i used a quarter inch black melamine sacrificial top because i'm always damaging my tops and wanted to be able to replace it a couple years down the road really quick and easily so you might be wondering why i didn't do the same thing here and the main reason is that I'm cutting that router table into it. And I didn't want to have to do a new inlay every time I replace the top. So what I did was I went with a lot more durable material. And this is kind of a higher end laminate. It's called Mirlux, M-I-R-L-U-X, I think. And I got this from that same specialty hardwood dealer that is about 10 minutes from me. It's Hardwood Industries, if you happen to be a Portland local. They have a couple shops in Oregon. And it's not this glossy. This is a protective coating that comes on it. And it's kind of expensive. It was like 150 bucks a sheet. So it's a little bit of an investment. But for a workbench that's going to get a lot of use and abuse, I figured it was going to be worth it. One of the downsides to this white side inlay kit is that it could only cut about a quarter inch down when I have that template on top. So I had to try to not cut past my line with the jigsaw. And then I came back with my flush trim bit. And this is the big daddy bit. That's the actual name. And no, you don't need a bit this big or fancy. It's just the only one I had with the bushing on top. All of my other template bits have the bushing on the bottom. So this is what I used for this part here. And you also notice how much dust is there. Wait till the end of the video when I do some more flush trimming and I actually hook up the dust collection and I felt pretty dumb for not doing it here because it, this Festool dust extraction works really, really well.
I mentioned it was going to be tight and it was definitely snug, but that's what we wanted, right? We wanted it to look like a professional inlay. And if you have a buddy with a CNC machine, definitely use this as an opportunity to have them cut this out for you because it'll be a lot easier and fit a lot better. Although mine actually fit pretty good. I was pretty impressed with this little white side router inlay kit in the end. Next thing I had to do was attach the other side to it. And most people aren't going bigger than a four by eight outfeed table, so you won't have to do this. And I have a domino, so I figured I might as well use it because it was gonna really help with the alignment of these sheets. It would be a real pain if you had, you know, a little eighth inch gap from one sheet to the other. It'd always be catching tables as you're sliding them across. So I used the domino, it worked well. A couple extra long pipe clamps hooked to other long pipe clamps, let it sit overnight. And this is what I came up with to attach the top to the base. And the kit they sent me actually didn't come with these. I had to order these myself. They are made for this 45 series extrusion though. So they're gonna sit just perfectly flush with the top. And these are just some regular old, I think wood screws or cabinet screws. And I intentionally built it slightly oversized so I could use this flush trim bit and come back and cut it down to the perfect size. And I actually messed up on a couple parts where it didn't quite come out to the very edge. So there's like an eighth inch gap on a couple sections. So might not be ready for a luxury home, but again, probably fine for an outfeed table. This countertop material actually comes in a million different colors. There's like gloss white and flat white and gloss black and gloss red. And there's even like a stainless material that you can get with this. So a lot of options. I went with this cool satin black, which I really like. I use this glide coat on all my tools, cast iron. It works really, really well. It'll repel adhesives and make things just slide on it very easily. I watched a video on how to make these Festool vacuum clamp mounts for a vertical mount, and they're supposed to go on a Festool MFT table. And this is something I didn't even think about when I ordered this extrusion outfit table that I think is really cool because you can add all kinds of brackets to it. And here's how those T-nets work. You just slide them in and then they spin automatically. So you can take them off, you can slide them down. I could move them right next to each other if I wanted. Lots of flexibility, so another real cool advantage to this extrusion. And here is some of my wiring, which is not that elegant, but what I did do was came up with a remote switch to mount my vacuum clamp. So I can just flip that switch and not have to crawl under to turn that vacuum pump on. So again, just kind of keeping everything as quick and easy as I can, everything at my fingertips. And you can see there that I can fold one down, I can fold them both down and this has some pretty incredible gripping power. I think it can max out at like 120 pounds at 90 degrees. And that's, in, that's a red oak slab. So that's not a light piece of wood and it's holding it no problem. I call these vacuum clamps my favorite tool that I don't need because really you can accomplish the same thing by sanding something on a table. And for large pieces of wood like this, they're actually not as useful as they are for a small piece because the small pieces are the ones that really like to wander on you when you're trying to sand them. And they cost about 1300 bucks. So it's a lot of money, especially for a small you know, garage shop, but I really, really like them. And here's one thing I got to have to adjust. It wasn't a surprise. I knew that was gonna happen, but I'm gonna have to undo that and attach it with magnets or something later. One of the themes of my shop that I've tried to maintain is keeping everything as efficient as possible and as automated as possible. And one thing you can do to your shop that I've done that I think is really cool is adding these IVAC blast gates and just demonstrating how they work here. But you turn your tool on, the blast gate opens automatically. It also powers your dust collector on and runs it as long as you're running your tool. Then when you turn your tool off, it will close the blast gate and turn the dust collector off. And there are some other options where you can have it keep running for a predetermined amount of time if you want, or you can have it shut down as soon as you turn your tool off. So just a really cool feature and something you can do to make your shop a little bit smarter. All right, each week I like to end our videos with a little call to action. So what we do is we start our question or comment with a different word or phrase each week, and that does two things. Is The first thing, it lets me know you made it all the way to the end of the video, and I can give those people a little bit of credit and answer all of those questions or comments first. Second thing it does is it confuses the people that don't make it all the way to the end of the video. So this week, start your question or comment with your favorite band. And as an added bonus, I'll give a shout out in another video of the first person whose favorite band is the same as my favorite band. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a great week.